All right, I took the uh, tone ring out. I turned it around. You can see it inside of here. It's inside of the tubophone ring. And I lowered it down into the banjo so that it's down in there nice and deep. And um, it's kind of wedged in there and bolted here. That looks a little tacky, but I've seen worse things done to banjos by people other than myself. So I'm just saying. Of course, the neck came off, which meant I had to readjust the neck or try to. And then uh, now all the strings are needing to stretch again. Um, I still can adjust the head a bit, but I'm going to leave it like this for a while and play it, and uh, we'll see what we think. Uh, by the name, by the way, I did remember the name of the guy. Um, the banjo that I rebuilt was for a guy named well, John Durham was the original guy, and it was his uh, sort of son-in-law, I think. His name's also John, and I haven't remembered the guy, the name of the fellow that sent me the strap, but you'll see this video, and you just jump in there and say, hey, that was me, just so people know who you are, because you did really great work here. So, with that, all that said, I'm going to quit messing around with this thing, uh, for one night anyway, or maybe I'll just sit around and play it for the rest of the night, and let those strings stretch. Uh, I got this capo on here, that probably would make an effect to it, too. Um, I got the capo on there largely because this thing has a such a poor neck that it rattles without it because the uh, nut isn't placed in the proper place. Sometimes you put a capo on it bends your strings and sometimes it bends them to a place where you don't really want them to be oh this thing is not in the it's not in the nut up here this string is I got both strings in the first groove up here that would, that could certainly be a problem so many adjustments to make to get one just right.
think I like that. We're going to go with it for now. See y'all.